good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever that may be, whenever and wherever you are listening, you are welcome here. We are just getting underway in episode 11 of the local sports podcast brand that updates regularly on anything with Minot Sports. This is the Minot Sports Podcast brought to you by KMSU TV and Radio. Hello again, Minot Sports fans. Happy Election Day. I am indeed recording this on November 3rd, the Tuesday after the first Monday, which that is today. We have a few days off on this Tuesday as well as tomorrow. This will probably be out by the time there's officially one of the two candidates elected. A busy day in America, not so much in the Minot Sports world, but that's okay. There will be off days here and there, and that's totally fine. However, that also gives us the opportunity to summarize what recently, what events recently just happened in the Minot Sports world. Got another great show for you guys coming your way. Big talk about all the postseason action happening. Bishop Ryan in a region qualifier and postseason in football. It has turned into a must-win in every game for the Lions. For Minot High Volleyball, they're just about to start here pretty soon. And then you got, for hockey, a little bit of the opposite. They are just getting going in a new season for the MSU women's squad. So lots of excitement going around. It feels like Christmas morning every time a new season begins And the postseason can be applied there as well. You have heightened expectations. In some cases, you may have some new players coming in, some new recruits, some players getting promotions on the roster, and you're stoked to see what you can do. It's especially the same if you're watching all in on the professional sports. It's easy to make trades, sign free agents, drafting, Like I said, there's all sorts of excitement to it. And why don't we get started with this early season excitement being brought upon by the MSU women's hockey team. Very fortunate for them and the men's team as well as the Minotauros being able to have a season and a schedule in place given the green light to go ahead. They started off with the green and white Inner squad game. This came after they introduced some nice new jerseys. They are now adding green MSU Beaver athletic colors, adding a little bit of the green in there now. And really, that was how white and green got to be with these new jerseys. The greens are, will be the road jerseys, and then the whites will be at home. So they had that, a fun little preseason inter-squad game, just to get the ladies going off and early on the ice. The result of that was Team White winning it 5-4, to and it went all the way to a shootout. So not only is this a fun little preseason event for the fans to go to, despite the restrictions on fan attendance due to the current circumstances unfortunately kind of a little fun filled preseason event where regulation just was not enough we needed more went through overtime and then eventually the shootout winner was scored but some extra fun filled action for the fans and for those that weren't able to come some fun action being streamed some goals probably felt good for some of the players to get Maybe some confidence boosters along in there. We had a hat trick scored in that one. Sammy Joe Henry of Team Green. Ensley Fendele also had two goals and an assist and had one of the goals in the shootout. So some good games for some of these girls. And this eventually turned out to be good preparation for them because it was the weekend right after their Sunday scrimmage or inner squad game, whatever you want to call it. They had their home opener that same week and that upcoming weekend. Kind of an unusual opponent, although how they played MSU, how they played against them, their game style, their game plan, how they played them, 
at least that's it didn't feel like it that way what do you think of when i say team Andy u19 you might think well those are high school players and indeed that is the case that was who msu played for their first weekend series the team Andy tier one u19 program and so these are basically to kind of summarize what that means is a team full of high school all-stars going up against a college team and so I guess now when that is said when you think about it it doesn't sound as bad and they made it competitive they made it they gave MSU a good run for their money and there's there's no bad blood between these two let's make that clear right away actually that should have been mentioned firsthand is that team nd inside the state there really there's no rivalry they're all all the players come from all around the state jamestown fargo grand forks there were some minor jets players too some of the current minor high jets players were playing on that team abigail tallman peyton lang emily thiele amber borkis they all played for the team nd program and of course that should also prompt you to think that they are currently making a big impact for the Minot High Majets squad. A big reason why the Majets were successful last season, getting third place in the state tournament. And deservedly so, they find themselves playing for the Team ND Tier 1 U19 club that would go on to face MSU at Women's Hockey for the first game of the new season for your Lady Beavers. And this past weekend, and like I said... Team ND gave MSU a run for their money How for how good they are. Definitely would apply that to the situation. Although they played them hard, MSU still coming up with wins on both games that were played on Saturday and Sunday. The first game being 6-1 to one for your Beavers, although kind of not as close as the other game. It was still, from what I saw, and if you were there at the game... You could tell that Team ND was defensively sound and structured. There was a lot of physicality in there too, although checking was called a few times in this past weekend series. Body checking, that is. Confirmed penalties for the women's hockey level. It was physical and the defensive structure, you cap that off with Kaylee Baker and Amber Borkisonet. That is a deadly duo for even for the high school level to even have one of those is to even have one of those goalies is got to be a, a dream for any coach at the North Dakota girls high school level fortunately there is a program like a team ND that is able to have both goalies and sometimes they just use the program to get better to develop the players get them ready for their respective high school careers or high school seasons and sometimes they may need, there are some questions in the schedule, like playing a college team as a club that has high school all-stars on your roster. That could be good to build a character and a better way to compete for your respective division or level that you play at. Get some experience in there, kind of getting a little bit off track, not necessarily though. Basically what I'm saying is that for how good the MSU women's hockey team is, the success they've had in the past few years, Team ND, they were no slouch. They were in it for most of both games. And MSU pulling out the wins for both games, 6-1 to one on Friday, and then it was 4-2 to two on Sunday. Both goalies for Team ND playing phenomenal. They were a big reason why... They stayed alive in that weekend series. And some of the goals, even Abigail Tallman of the Minot High Majets, she scored some nice goals in that series. And then Amber Borkis came in for a period. Really her and the other goalie, Kaylee Baker, they stood on their heads a lot in that weekend series. And just some tough breaks happened. And sometimes you just got to get lucky. And fortunate enough for the Beavers, they were able to outwork outwit the roster on the team nd club msu on the other hand had to get their goals somehow in some way 
and what a team and what team ND did this past weekend they made them work for it that's again bottom line they're a good team it's high school all-stars so there will be no guarantee for future matchups but this was probably just a weekend series for you know just having a high school all the best high school players in the state come and face a college team just to see how they would perform maybe it was for development to build character could have been something just to have games on the schedule so they know they can say they've played games who knows but those were official games and again high school all-stars versus a college team the college team prevailed but that didn't come without the high school all-star players putting up a fight but overall it was a pretty darn good series at least the second half was exciting because they made it interesting there team nd did and minot state just pulling away with the win and again winning six to one and four to two that was all she wrote for the weekend unfortunately for your lady beavers they had an upcoming series starting on thursday actually versus midland university we got word that that will not be happening due to covid reasons those matchups are canceled at least from what i can see they are canceled but that may change who knows but the weekend after so not this upcoming weekend but the weekend after they will have a home and home series versus the college making their women's hockey inaugural season Dakota College at Botno. Yes, they have a new women's hockey program now. I believe they are Division II, if I'm not mistaken. But because they are a team within state borders, easier travel, easier time management, that is who they will be facing for a number of series for years to come. And it will be their first time on November 14th and then the 15th. Up in Botno will cap off that first ever series between the two. So that is the latest for MSU Women's Hockey. The big action that just happened, not this past weekend, but kind of before it, and then just yesterday on Monday, we had the District 12 Volleyball Tournament. That finally capped off yesterday, and we have results. And for some of the local teams here in town, Bishop Ryan and Ari Deemers. Ari Deemers clinching before the Bishop Ryan Lions did. Let's take a look at what happened in the bracket. So quickly going over here in round one, it was number one DLB versus number eight MLS. It was number four Glenburn versus number five Surrey. Number two Ari Deemers versus number seven South Prairie. And number three, Bishop Ryan versus number six, Lewis and Clark Berthold. And, of course, as mentioned in one of the earlier episodes, Surrey had to forfeit. And I think MLS had to kind of forfeit in a way. And so they automatically got a spot in the region qualifier game. One of the region qualifier games for the region six volleyball tournament. That meant DLB had a bye week. Heading into the semifinal round versus Glenburn. And so that would leave two active games to be played in which the Ari Redeemers Knights defeated the South Prairie Royals in a sweep 3-0. And then for Bishop Ryan, they also swept Lewis and Clark Berthold 3-0. So what does that mean? We got to see the Crosstown rivalry for another time once in the regular season but that wasn't enough we had to get one in the postseason and so it wasn't necessarily a must win for both teams but it's still considered still considerably a must win to clinch a spot in the region six volleyball tournament and a chance to play in the district 12 volleyball championship match for that game that ended up being a sweep for the second seeded Ari Redeemers Knights, 3 0, of course. DLB took down Glenburn in the other semifinal matchup. So that would mean it is Delax Burlington, the first seed versus the number two seed, Ari Redeemers Knights. Before we summarize that matchup, a look at what happened in the loser out games for 
Lewis and Clark Berthold and South Prairie. Lewis and Clark defeating the South Prairie Royals 3-2. to two. South Prairie is out. They go on to the region qualifier in which they would face the Glenburn Panthers. And then the other loser out game was actually solved via forfeit cancellation. And so that left number eight, Mohal Lansford Sherwood versus the number three, Bishop Ryan Lyons. And the Lions would take that one, 3 nothing in a sweep in a critical game like that. For the Lions to get it in a sweep, that is just absolutely impressive. Although MLS was the eighth and final seed to get in, they still made the postseason, and for how far they made it, you got to give them credit. I know there was kind of some luck involved, but they did their best, and they should be proud for how far they made it. But... For the minor sports teams, they are off to the Region 6 tournament, officially confirmed, Ryan winning in a region qualifier. For the other region qualifier, actually, I'm not sure if I had mentioned this already, but Lewis and Clark Berthold losing to the Glenburn Panthers, also in a sweep, a lot of sweeps in this tournament, as well as during the regular season. And then for the District 12 Championship, in which both teams had already qualified for the Region 6 Tournament, now playing for the District 12 Championship between the Deluxe Burlington Lakers, the first seed, and the second seed, Ari Deemers Knights. And the Knights from Ari Deemers pull away with the 3-1 to victory. And so the Knights, as the second seed, they are District 12 Champions, and they will be one of the one-seeds... One of the two one seeds, I should say it that way, heading into the Region 6 tournament. DLB will be a second seed, Bishop Ryan a third seed, and a fourth seed going to Glenburn. Looking at what we have now for the Region 6 volleyball tournament that is confirmed officially, dates are on November 10th, 12th, and 14th. So the 10th is on a Tuesday. All games will start at the same time at 7 o'clock. Only difference is that the Saturday Region 6 Championship game for a chance to go to the state tournament will be at 2 o'clock. But for the bracket, we have District 12 Seed 1 Ari Deemers hosting District 11 Seed 4 Botno. District 11 Seed number 2 Velva will host the third seed at Bishop Ryan, in which they got the third seed from District 12. The first seed coming out of District 11, the Rugby Panthers. So it's a battle of the Panthers and Glenburn at number four from District 12. And then from District 12, seed two, Delax Burlington will host the third seed from District 11, the Drake Animus Raiders. So uh, there you have it. The one note to keep in mind for this Region 6 tournament, they are once again going for the higher seed will host. So it's an extra home game for whichever team is seeded higher. They will not, due to COVID, have any of the tournaments, maybe minus the state tournament, have them be played at some of the higher end complexes or arenas, stadiums. Usually the Minot City Auditorium but that is not the case. So higher seeds will host. That is the same case again for Region 6. Again, 10th, 12th, and 14th. Those are the days for Region 6 action. It is now on for the real test of who can win all three games to get a spot in the state tournament. And even then, this is a huge mountain to climb if you add on the state tournament there. Moving forward, it is a must-win for every single team. You win all three of your games in Region 6, you go to the state tournament. And even when you get to the state tournament, it is a whole nother animal because there are a lot of good volleyball programs in and around the state. But this is where the real test begins for the Minot sports teams here in town. You also got to be careful because your seed may not mean much. There are teams actually gunning for to be as good as you. And so the thing that I've seen with Ari Deemers is they have really elevated their game this postseason. Whereas what I saw, I'll give a little two cents here on the Knights real quick. Of course, they had some tough matchups, some tough games 
against tougher opponents in the regular season. They were pretty solid. They were what I expected they would be. One of those top-end teams hanging around, especially in the Region 6. I'm not talking just the District 12 division. I'm talking for a whole Region 6. They were, in fact, one of the top teams up there. And they proved it this District 12 tournament. And from what I've seen from them, I can now see why they are six-time defending Region 6 champions. And they are proving it, certainly. I'll give a little thought on the Lions 2. What a great season for them. Although they had to face Ari Demers, who in which, again, the six-time defending Region 6 champions, making it to the state tournament that many times is impressive. Although they had to face them, it was a great season for them nonetheless. And they have found themselves back at the Region 6 tourney. And although they are a third seed, they can still, I still believe they can do some damage. Of course, Velva is the higher seed. Focus on what you can do. Work to your strengths, and you have a chance. But with these seeds, with the way North Dakota Volleyball, how it is like, you best play your cards right, and that you gotta work for it. And our Redeemers also making sure don't overlook your opponents. I keep this I keep this topic on hand every episode. I think for our Redeemers, just don't overlook any of your opponents, but I do think they have a great chance at making it to the Region 6 championship game. And same can be said for Bishop Bryan for how good of the season they had. As I referenced earlier, we are at that time where don't count anyone out. And the teams that are good, they are like Ari Deemers, they're really going to elevate their game even more. And like I've said, we've we've been seeing that with the Knights. They are really proven the strength and the caliber, the level that they can go at. And Bishop Ryan has some strengths of their own. And then Dallax Burlington, there is a reason that they were first seed heading into District 12 tourney time. They're still going to be up there hanging around. Heck, they could even make the Region 6 championship game. And we are at that point. Like I said, it is now or never do or die for all of these teams that I just referenced. To win the Region 6 tourney and get into the real big deal, the state tournament, win all three of your games, that will be the task for these eight teams heading straight into tourney time next Tuesday night on November 10th. So that is coming up soon. Final thoughts for Bishop Ryan, Ari Demers, and Delax Burlington, who we covered one time during the regular season. Just stick to your game plan, stick to your strengths. Really, you've seen it with our Redeemers and that elevation of their game all around. But it's crunch time now, and this is where it gets all serious. And so there you have it for District 12 tourney results. Still want to congratulate the other teams that participated on great seasons. Who knows what they may be like next year. And now sticking with some more volleyball... We got Mine at High just getting ready to start a critical, all-important play-in game. It'll be a 7 versus 10 seed match for a spot in the West Region Class A Volleyball Tournament, which they are going the same format as what they did for District 12 Class B and what they're about to do with Class B Region 6. The higher seed gets to host each of the respective West Region matches that are played. And so, Mine at High, as the seventh seed, they get to host this play-in game versus the 10 seed Williston Coyotes. The other play-in game will be in Watford City when the Wolves host the Dickinson Midgets. That is an eight versus nine seed. But once again, we have found Mine at High Majets Volleyball to be in this position once again coming around postseason play for this one the first six seeds got in to the west region tournament two more spots to be determined and that is all between four teams watford city dickinson minot and williston for minot going up against williston we are at the time now where it is to step up and show that you can play and that you belong in this tourney. 
the seeds may not be as close as the eight versus nine, but this could also easily go in Williston's favor. That's how close it is. For Minot, at this time, it is all about stepping up to the plate and showing your worth. To get rewarded with another home play-in game once again, it's time to take advantage. So it is, again, a time for Minot High to step up, going with a little theme for them. Step up and win. Technically, a postseason match because they're fighting for their season. If Minot High wins, they will travel to Mandan, where they will take on the second seed, the Mandan Braves. And again, going back to that rule, they're the higher the seed, they get to host that first round of the region tournament. And then the winner between Watford City and Dickinson, they will travel to Bismarck to take on the first seeded Century Patriots. State qualifiers and the region championship game, however, will be played at Bismarck Legacy High School. So a lot of the Bismarck teams, they're already in town, already in the tourney bracket. Probably makes it easier for them. So that is what they determined there. Again, at 7 o'clock start times for all first round matchups. However, for Minot High and Williston, that is a 6 o'clock start time for their play-in match. Just all about, once again, for Minot, it's time to step up, win, and you're in. Just like that. And so that is all for the volleyball postseason talk there. There's a lot more happening with some other postseason action. The Bishop Ryan Lions in football picking up a big win in the quarterfinal round versus the Shiloh Christian Skyhawks down in Bismarck. The final score in that one was 19-7. Jackson Feller leading the way once again for the Lions. Had a tough first half, but really came on in the second portion and really took charge and led the Lions to victory once again. Of course, all of their skill players making their contributions. I unfortunately did not see some of the other scores that were made, but the important stat from it was that the Lions, they pick up the win. They are on to the North Dakota Class A Football State Tournament semifinal round, where they will face on Saturday the defending Class A champions, the Langdon Edmore Munich Cardinals, the team that defeated the Lions in the state title game last year. So this will be a big test for the Lions. For sure, they are well aware of the result that happened last year, and they are well aware of who did it against them. And so they know what they're going up against, and that might be an advantage for the Lions, having known what worked well for them and what they can improve on against the Cardinals. Again, this is a big challenge for the Lions, and it is simply put, to be the best, you got to beat the best. And that is what the Lions are facing this upcoming weekend. This is where, if you want to talk about stepping up, this is where Bishop Ryan really has to put on their hard hats and go to work. This is where hard work has to overcome talent. And then with that hard work, the talent will come through. The skill will come through. And that will come, hopefully, away with points. Langdon Edmore Munich, the first seed, while Bishop Ryan is the two seed from Region 3. That game will be played a Saturday at Langdon Area High School, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. For the Lions, like I said, there is if there is a time, if there is a time to show up, here it is right here. The team that beat you in the state title game last season, you know what they're like. You faced them before. This is where you rise to the challenge, take it head on. This is where you play the best game of the season. Probably best game of their careers right here. This is where you have to play your very best ever, maybe. And again, they know what's at hand. So this is, again, a big test. Bishop Ryan, they have all the talent to make it happen. But the hard work has to come in to really effectively have a chance. And so that is what we have coming up for one of the semifinal matchups going on in Langdon. The other semifinal matchup is between Lisbon and Velva. The Aggies, one of the teams that beat Bishop Ryan earlier in the season. Velva was the third seed. Lisbon is the second seed. So Lisbon hosting that one. And that is what we have for the Class A North Dakota football playoff bracket. 
the winners of both matchups will go on to the state title game in the Fargo Dome. And you can see why this is a huge, huge game for Bishop Ryan. And there we have it for some sports scores and analysis. On to some news. Congrats to MSU football new captains announced. The names are the following. Isaiah Bigby, Ben Belinsky, Sebastian Gutierrez, Troy Cowell, Derek Wax, and Jordan Will. All well-deserving for you guys. And especially shout out to Troy Cowell. He is our sports reporter for the weekly campus TV show MSU Inside Out that we produce weekly on Thursdays at 5 o'clock. So be sure to check that out. Kind of giving out a little early promo there. But again, all guys very well-deserving. Well-known names within the program. Nicely done, gentlemen. And congrats goes out to a few of the Minot Minotauros hockey players for the month of October. Keenan Rancier getting a star of the month at the goaltender position. And Joseph Hargindigi getting star of the month for the forward position. For their performances in the month of October, again, well-deserved for these guys as well and also for the incredible games that they've had. And certainly, forgot to mention Keenan Rancier, also a member of that breakout list of players this season for your Minot Minotauros. He, as well as Hargindigi, and I mentioned Damon Zimmer last week, definitely putting on a show for the fans. Also, some more Toros news. Next weekend's series, or I should say, this upcoming weekend versus the St. Cloud Norseman that was supposed to be in St. Cloud. Those are postponed for the time being due to COVID reasons once again. And then also the Tuesday night game that was supposed to be in Minot, that, that is next Tuesday actually, versus the Bismarck Bobcats. That is also postponed due to COVID reasons. So a little bit of schedule updates there. Probably we'll have to be saying that a lot in this sports season. Hopefully we don't have to say it as much, but they will be common, so just a fair warning out to you guys. And uh, there you have it, folks. Episode 11 of Season 2 from the Minot Sports Podcast. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for listening each and every time I post. You guys are always wonderful for me. I can't thank you enough. Before we head off, just want to wish a congratulations to all of the MSU women's hockey players scoring their first collegiate goal this past weekend. And there you have it, folks. The MyNet Sports Podcast. Real quickly, just want to mention that we are sponsored by KMSU TV and Radio. You can check us out and KMSU TV and Radio on social media. Pages are located on the Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter social media platforms, as well as YouTube, where you will find a lot of where we post our content. Also check out MSU Inside Out, the weekly TV show produced by KMSU TV every Thursday at 5. Again, I mentioned Troy Cowell earlier. He is our sports reporter. I am lucky to be a co-host of the show. So make sure to check it out. Lots of fun news, weather, and sports going around. You won't want to miss it each week. But that will do it for episode 11 of season 2. Thank you guys once again for listening. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy out there. And take care.